Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just gonna get right to the point. I was thinking about the turning points in Harry Potter, specifically the Goblet of Fire, how the story changes and the way it has a very dark turning point. So then I thought, actually, all of the Harry Potter books have dark turning points that sways the situation into one of extreme danger. With that being said, I thought it would be a fun video idea to properly look at every dark turning point in each Harry Potter book, beginning with the first, the Philosopher's Stone. So let's begin with that book. Now this is the book that really introduces us to Harry and the world of magic. We see Harry leave the awful home he was raised in and finally feel like he's found a home where he belongs. Now the trio spend the majority of the book believing that Snape was the actual bad guy who was working to steal the Philosopher's Stone, where it was actually Quirinus Quirrell. But what or where is the turning point in this book? Well, for me, the turning point in the Philosopher's Stone is the point at which the chance of death is really high, which of course is the safety measures, the challenges that were set up to protect the actual Philosopher's Stone itself. For starters, the entrance door is protected by Fluffy, a giant three-headed aggressive dog that is trained to basically rip any challenger to pieces, so trust me, that dog isn't holding back. And if you're skillful enough to navigate past Fluffy, then you become entrapped in Devil's Snare, a plan that designed to strangle its victims. The way of which to escape is to remain absolutely still. The trouble is, it tightens around you before it loosens, which causes the entrapped people to move again in a panic, hence Ron Weasley's struggles. After that, the key to the next door can only be retrieved by flying a broom in a small room while being distracted by hundreds of other wrong keys before having to win a giant sized game of chess where the chess piece you represent is tied to your life basically should you be swept off the board. Ron narrowly escaped with his life and that was down to him being on the knight's horse which took most of the blow. So if you manage to not get killed so far, then you only have to master a wizard's riddle of dangerous poisonous potions before retrieving the philosopher's stone from the mirror only if you don't want to use it for yourself. So although there was moments throughout the book that did spell danger, the darkest turning point for me was the challenges to get to the philosopher's stone. Anyway, let's move on and take a look at the Chamber of Secrets and ask the question, what is the turning point in this book? Well, let's take a look. Harry spends the majority of this book trying to find out what exactly happened 50 years ago that seen Hagrid expelled from Hogwarts and, more importantly, seen a student die. Harry spends quite a large portion of his time talking to Tom Marvolo Riddle through the old diary, only to discover that Ginny Weasley had done the exact same thing, except Ginny's pouring of her heart into the journal fueled the 16-year-old Tom Riddle's own life force while simultaneously draining her own. The turning point comes where Harry realises that Tom is in fact Lord of Voldemort and he had been fooled into trusting him from their conversations through the diary. Ginny Weasley was on the brink of death, Voldemort had nearly returned to power and Harry's arm was pierced by the heavily venomous Basilisk Fang which would have killed him in minutes only for Fox saving him. Harry had come so close to death in this book, not just him but Ginny too. It was a massive turning point not just for the book but for the whole Harry Potter story so far because it showed the lengths Voldemort would go to in order to return to power. So when it comes to the third book, The Prisoner of Azkaban, the turning point is more of a build up to a false expectation. So what do I mean by this? Well in the third installment of the Harry Potter saga or franchise or whatever you want to call it, Harry discovers a lot more about his past and the true extent of what happened to his parents, how they were portrayed by Sirius Black. He goes through the majority of the year believing that this was the case. He gets so angry over the fact that his parents closest friend betrayed them that Harry actually wants to kill Sirius. Now the dark turning point here is the revelation that it was actually Peter Pettigrew aka Wormtail that betrayed Lily and James. Not only that, he kills 12 innocent muggles and betrayed many of the Order's secrets to Voldemort while acting as a double agent and actually framed Sirius Black. 
Furthermore, Harry's decision then to let Wormtail live actually set a chain of events that seen him be instrumental in Voldemort's return. Now you can see a proper breakdown video on that situation by clicking the card and watching that video next. So let's move on to the big one. When it comes to the Goblet of Fire, it gets really dark. Like it's not just a dark turning point for the book, but for the actual overall story. Cedric Diggory's death was a harsh realisation that people were going to die. The Dark Lord was back and now Harry had a really, really big target on his back. The Goblet of Fire was the end of the reader's somewhat happy journey through the magical world. Up until that point, the threat was always dealt with. There was always a positive outcome, which is why this book is so crucial for the transition to a darker tone. Now, The Order of the Phoenix was the first book that seen Harry have to deal with the aftermath of Cedric Diggory's death. The turning point here was, you've guessed it, Sirius Black's death. But not just for the fact that he died, it's what his death signified. Harry was just coming to terms with what happened to Cedric, but when his godfather was killed, it not only reaffirmed what Diggory's death spelt, in which more people were going to die, but it was a huge reality check for Harry alone, as it also meant that people close to him were going to die. Losing Sirius was a very difficult thing to take, as Harry had finally found a family figure after growing up without his parents. Sirius Black was the closest person his father had to a brother. He genuinely adored Harry and the fact he was now gone was probably one of the darkest turning points in the whole story. Anyway, let's move on. Let's take a look at The Half-Blood Prince, a book of which the turning point came toward the end, which was of course, the death of Albus Dumbledore. Now guys, it's not just a case of me choosing the obvious choice, Dumbledore being killed, but like Sirius Black, it was what his death represented for the story and for Harry. Harry had witnessed Severus Snape, a man who both he and Dumbledore trusted, literally end the latter's life right in front of the Death Eaters and in front of Harry. This turning point was so dark because it meant two things. The first is the Order of the Phoenix had now just lost its most fiercest warrior, its most powerful warrior. It lost the only person who could actually defeat Voldemort, the only person whom the Dark Lord feared. They also lost Snape who for all Harry knew was informing Voldemort of every step the Order took and Harry held on to that anger right up until he witnessed his death in the Deathly Hallows which actually brings us to our final turning point of the video. Now the Deathly Hallows is where it all ends. Even to this day guys, that tagline you know on the, the big cinema screen, it's just it's awesome to this day. Anyway, the dark turning point for this book is Harry realising that he has to die in order for Voldemort to finally be defeated. It's a sobering realisation that things don't always go to plan and that self-sacrifice is a power that the Dark Lord will never have. As he walks into the face of death willingly, it creates a protective barrier for everyone which is a massive relief for Harry as so many people have died already for the cause. The deaths of those who fought in the Battle of Hogwarts is something that haunts Harry for the remainder of his life. And with that being said everyone, that is my video on every dark turning point in every Harry Potter book. Let me know if the situation is different for you. Is there a book that you don't agree with? Maybe there's a different turning point for you. Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching guys. I really appreciate your time and the effort it takes to watch my videos. See you all in the next one.